The senior year of high school can be a challenging one. Huge life decisions are often made in a short amount of time, and let's face it, with limited experience to draw from. Those challenges can be compounded when someone important in your life is no longer there. In this episode of Senior Spotlight, we travel to Lincoln High School, where one senior's current success and plans for the future have been inspired by faith, hope, and love. Choir at Lincoln High School is complex, multi-layered, and successful. Here at Lincoln High School, we have quite a few different uh, groups. We've got three large choirs that meet in about five different sections. And then we have six select ensembles that meet opposite their lunch. And so they audition um, and compete to get into those. And they are you know, placed by their skill level. Um, and, and age is sometimes a factor with that. Lincoln's very successful with honors choirs um, at the state, regional, and national level. Um, this past year, we had 22 students make it in one of the most elite honors choir, which is South Dakota Senior Honor Choir. And that's an honor choir where they have to take a written exam, they have to sing a solo, um, sight read, and do tonal memory. And so it, it really measures their skill level as a complete um, musician um, and singer, and not just based on one thing, but on their whole level, and it gives a complete picture. And so we consistently have had in the 20 some range students that have made South Dakota Senior Honor Choir for sure in the last five years, and I'd have to go back in the records and look, but, but they're making statements at the state, regional, and nationals, so that we're pretty excited about it. On any given morning at Lincoln, you'll find... You will see Concert Choir, which is one of our large choirs, and that is um, juniors and seniors that are auditioned. They have competed for those spots, and very much that's the group they shoot for as far as the large choir um, experience. And then you will also see Chamber Singers, which is an, our top, probably most competed for small group ensemble, which is usually between 20 and 24 kids. And so it's highly competitive, very skill-based, and um, these kids just love singing, but in order to get there, they have to work really hard. One student in both of these elite groups is Savannah Heron. Savannah Heron has been singing with us since she was a freshman, and I still remember her and where she sat in the freshman girls' corral, and it's always amazing to me when they come in as freshmen and they have no idea and they're lost kind of and all of a sudden they're you know, trying to figure out and navigate what these huge programs are like and, and what that means. And she uh, definitely stood out from the beginning as a leader as far as working hard, um, sitting up well, doing what she was supposed to and you could tell way as Back as a freshman, she was going to do well because she had that drive, she had that sparkle in her eye, and she, she knew what she wanted. And she was just really willing to go the extra mile and work hard for it. So my dad actually sang, so how my, my dad and my mom met actually was through a ministry team called New Day, and I doubt anyone will know what that is. But um, my dad, it was like a ministry team where they'd go out and um, they'd have like a set, and then my mom actually spoke for it, so she was actually more like go, going out and being relational, but my dad sang for it. And so um, my mom also was a singer, but not to the extent my dad was, but um, I don't know, like I've been singing since seventh, like technically in choir since seventh grade. Um, I've been doing like worship stuff since seventh grade also, which I've really loved. Um, but I don't know, it's just, I was like thinking about this last year actually, that I don't know what I'd do without choir in my schedule, which sounds kind of cheesy, like a put up line, but it's true, like, I don't know what I'd, I don't know what classes I would have taken, I don't know why, I don't know, I just don't know what I would have done, but I love it. Savannah will also be auditioning for all state choir soon. I've also not made a lot of auditions, but um, 
I kind of take a line that Mrs. Conrad says all the time, that every audition makes you better. Um, which doesn't sound right, like, well, shouldn't, like, being actually in the choir make me better? Like, that's what I wanted to say, like, the first time she said that, but um, the more that I kept auditioning for things, I noticed, like, me, like, if I auditioned for something like chamber choir as a freshman, well, obviously I didn't make it in chamber choir as a freshman, so I've obviously must have grown since then, you know? It's a lot of work, a lot of memorization, a lot of commitment. As leadership in, in chamber singers especially, the, the load for performing, the, difficult, the difficulty of music as well as the schedule gets to be a lot of high pressure. And not only are they um, feeling that pressure in that group, but then they're expected to lead in choir as well. And so many of them often, all, not always, but almost completely, sometimes the section leaders end, end up being in chamber because those are the leaders that are driven and, and they've put in their time and they're the highest skill-based singers. And um, there's just a lot of pressure on them to step up and help and you know, to try and teach the younger ones. Uh, this is the way we do things here. There's a lot of pride and heritage in this school and in this, in this program. And uh, the kids really are the ones who are trying to pass that on to each other so that uh, they pass on that heritage and they feel that pressure. But if you know anything about Savannah, it's not unusual. You know, Savannah joined us on student council last, last February, and uh, she has hit the ground running. Uh, she is one of those young ladies that if you give her a task, she's going with it. She is currently our, our publicist uh, for our student council, and with that position, she manages all of our social media accounts. She puts some announcements out through the school. So she, she's very busy with that and does a really nice job with that. Uh, not only our student council, but she's also uh, the reporter at our uh, region level. So she does very, very similar things at that level too. So she went beyond our student body here at, at our local Lincoln High School that, to do this at the, at the region level too. You are elected to the, your position. Uh, you have to run, but there are some requirements to do that. You have to maintain, have maintained a 2.5 GPA and you need to fill out a petition form that's signed by 30 of your peers at that grade level plus four teacher signatures that endorse that you would be a good candidate uh, for this organization. And then you, as long as you're good on that, you campaign and then you are elected by the peers in your grade level. The kids, the student body does a really good job of electing. Uh, they, they know kids at their grade level that are, they're, they're well known, but they know uh, that they have good leadership qualities, they're very organized, their communication skills are outstanding. So uh, yeah, it's just not some ordinary kid. They stand out above the rest. I love student council, it's great because it's just a big team of leaders that can only encourage each other pretty much. Like um, I love working with different leaders um, and just all the characteristics that they bring to the table. Even if it's different from me, which sometimes I've had to learn the hard way where, you know, like sometimes um, leaders can butt heads and that just like breaks you down even more, but it doesn't, um, you know, it just like, the reason that you're put together in that team is so you can be stronger. So. Um, I haven't learned those lessons within student council, but I've learned that outside of student council. But I love, I love Lincoln Student Council. It's just a big group of um, kind-hearted students that just really want to be there for their school. Being there for her school also means being master of ceremonies for coronation this year. Well, I suddenly realized I was running late, you know, later than I expected, so I rushed here. Well, our next couple never runs late. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Lucy Deckinga and Sam Mendel. Taking on these leadership roles as a senior was not happenstance. She considers her class load this year to be lacking. To me, it's a little average this year, which I should not say that. But um, because my friend group is very scholarly. And so um, for me, I'm like, okay, only two AP classes. Like, what am I doing? But um, I know that I'm, this year I feel like God's called me to like be more involved within the school and be caring for other students and so my academics I've um, backed up a little bit. But um, So I am in AP Spanish, this, that means that's my fifth year, this is currently my fifth year of speaking, speaking Spanish. Like, 
Um, Spanish one's kind of like, hola, como estas? Like, how, how are you doing? Hi, my name is, you know, that stuff. But um, I also student mentor at Sonia Sotomayor for a second grade classroom, and it is phenomenal. I love it more than anything. It's hands down best part of my day. Um, the teacher is just super bubbly, and um, she's great, and she's really understanding of my really broken Spanish. <laughs> Um, but my goal for that is just, I don't know, I love, I love speaking Spanish, I love being bilingual and um, I actually had a really cool experience because in high school in Sioux Falls there's not a lot of students that just speak Spanish, like generally they speak English or are trying to learn English. So um, we had a new student um, slash like um, freshman who opened and rolled to Lincoln Lunch. Um, and that was put on, I think that was put on within the school, but they asked collision students to come help. Um, there was a senior there who only spoke in, uh, Spanish. And it, what was amazing is that not only was I there, but there was a freshman there that was the first class of um, Spanish immersion. And so it was just like such a cool experience, like just seeing this girl being so relieved by the fact that there are people that spoke her language. Like, I couldn't imagine, like, going to somewhere like Romania and trying to speak Romanian and then someone speaks English. Like, immediately that would be so comforting. I don't, I can't fathom um, the feeling that she probably had. But she, I just saw, like, this look of relief over her face. And um, she was really timid when she tried to speak English. But when she was speaking Spanish, she was this super, super bubbly, like, outgoing girl that just looked like she loved living life, so. You only have to listen to her speak to know her enthusiasm and energy is infectious. Every single day um, I go there and I'm actually there for about 40 minutes and um, I don't know, I love working with like the second graders because it actually feels like that their Spanish is like better than mine, which is pretty intimidating I gotta say, <laughs> but um, I don't know, it's just, I just, I love the feeling of knowing that every day I go there I'm bettering myself and speaking that language and I feel like it can, like it will speak depths just later in life, like it's something I can really use. She's one of our section leaders this year and she just leads from a very positive manner. Um, one of the things that strikes me about Savannah is her kindness to others. I've never seen her be mean in the four years that I've known her to anyone. I've seen her reach out to include kids that, you know, maybe are on the outside edges and, and you know, have a harder time coming into that you know, really burst of energy and, and, you know, high energy socializing and they're a little on the outside and she'll try and bring them in and include them. I've just seen her go out of her way to do that, to make others comfortable, you know, to engage them in a conversation and just to make them feel like part of our Lincoln Choir family. I know that Savannah is, is heavily involved in student council. Um, as well as I know she does a lot of outside of the school, she's involved in her church um, and then all of the, the music activities. So she just is a doer and a goer and just one of those positive, smiley, bubbly people that you want on your team no matter what activity it is. People who know her well can't say enough about her. It's high praise when teachers hope their own kids grow up to be like Savannah. Savannah is a sweetheart. Um, she is one of those kids that uh, you just dream that your daughter will become. Uh, she, she's well motivated. Uh, she has great leadership qualities. She's, she's a, a girl of tremendous character and integrity. She's really that, that, that I, want, I don't want to say perfect, but just that person that everyone uh, looks up to. That's partly because these teachers know something you may not. Savannah is navigating her senior year without a traditional compass that most students have. Okay, so not this past August, but the August before, um, my uncle passed away and he was actually up in Canada for um, a work conference or something. Um, and he was running at a park. He ran past his family and it was like a mom and her daughter that were walking their dogs in the park. And, um, I, the mom, it was one of them that just said to the other, like, that man looks very pale. Like, he looks, I wonder, like, I wonder if he's okay. And then the daughter turned around and looked, um, and she turns to her mom and says, why is that man staring at, her at his tire? So he had fallen down and collapsed in front of his car, and um, there were other witnesses around that said that 
they saw him reach out for his car handle, so he had like known something was wrong. Um, I'm pretty sure he had um, history of like heart palpitations, but my uncle had just ran a marathon the month before, and so we were just like it was very out of the blue. Um, my cousin is a junior. Sorry, I keep saying sophomore. He's a junior here at Lincoln, um, and we're pretty much brother and sister, is because. I, he is an only child and my siblings are both married and out of the house so um, that was more sudden and that was when my mom was alive and um, I don't know it was hard because I felt like for me my personality is I like to not mom other people but I love being there and being like hey just like no there's someone that cares for you and um, that's just very much in my personality and so I love like this sounds awful, but I loved being there for them during that tough time, but like I had no idea that like six months later that I'd be going through the same thing and they'd be consoling me, which was pretty intense. My mom, um, she passed away in this past January. She was battling um, colon cancer for about three years. Um, this, this coming November would have been like, if she was still living, it probably would have been like her fourth or fifth year. Um, so I think she was diagnosed in like 2014 or 2015, those November, uh, one of those Novembers. And um, so I like, or I don't like to compare, but I see it as like, um, seeing my uncle passing away, like that was more sudden and that was like, that's when people struggle with the grief, but like we've been grieving almost for like three years, which is like, um, I don't know, like I'm a fairly, like people tell me I'm a fairly positive person and like, um, they don't see um, that side of me when I talk, like I don't, I rarely talk about my mom passing away and I don't really see it as like hiding it, but um, I just have a greater love that's in me, that loves, for, like that loves me, like regardless whether I have both parents or just one or none. Um, and um, I don't know, like I love my mom and I realize now that I miss her more than like right after she passed because it's just like, little things in the day like people will question us like well this is your like this is your first like um, mother's day without your mom like how is that going and my this is my aunt who actually told me like this perspective and I didn't understand it until my mom did pass away but it is every day like um, I do think about my mom every day whether I like realize it or not and whether I get emotional about it like that's why I'm saying like normally when I talk about it I'm not um, it I don't know it comes and goes but um, I don't know, it's just, it's something that you deal with every day and you don't realize it, like that's not some, a feeling that a lot of people can process, including myself, I didn't process it when um, my uncle died and my cousin was like, it's, it's every day. Um, and yeah, it can be hard, but um, I also know that like, my aunt has a very funny way of putting it, like they're the ones who hijacked to heaven, which is kind of funny to me. But <laughs> Because I think it's true, like, um, they're the ones that, they just took a shortcut and just decided to go up and um, see Christ early, which I think is a really positive way to look at it, but um, it also leads us here to mourn and just to appreciate the lot, like the years that they had, which is really amazing. I know she lost her uncle, it would have been a year ago this past August, and uh, I also know her mom had been battling cancer for several years and so I knew that, you know, her uncle was unexpected, it was an unexpected death and, and that alone was rough but then to know that her mom's cancer was, was getting worse um, and you just felt for her, but she was always there. She was still positive. She was still reaching out to others. And then um, I knew it was when it was getting towards the end because her mom actually emailed me when she was in hospice and um, just wanted me to be aware and that if, you know, if I saw anything on this end where Savannah really needed um, someone, she wanted to make sure I had phone numbers for family members to get a hold of. So she was being taken care of by her mom and she didn't even realize that. Savannah lost her mom in January and uh, she didn't let that stop her. She, she got on student council, she, she campaigned through all of that and was elected to student council in February. Uh, 
You know, the student body is so supportive of her. You would never know that that young lady went through as much tragedy in her life as she did. She never lets on to that. So, I mean, that just speaks to her as a person where she is so motivated and doesn't let anything get her down that, I mean, and that's, that's kudos to our student body too, that they've embraced her and they, they've, They've really rallied behind her and have encouraged her to be the strong person that she is. Her faith and her family helped get Savannah through these tragedies. So did Lincoln High School. I think um, Mrs. Conrad and Mrs. Ferguson are like not only a mom to me, but a mom to like moms to everybody in the choir department. Um, they have no problem taking students under the wing, talking. Um, I just like, they're always there. Like you just know that like, if I'd have an issue um, personally that I was like, hey, I, I don't think I should like confide in a parent about this, I'd straight go to Mrs. Conrad Ferguson. And um, my friends were also very solid. Um, a lot of people just kind of walked up to me afterwards and like, I had no idea this was going on. Like, and I, I was hoping that that didn't seem like I was hiding pain because I, I just really didn't have pain with it. Like I was at peace with what ha had happened. But um, I don't know, I just love it was um, really touching. The choir department actually, I was gone one day from school and Mrs. Conrad Ferguson had had cards and they laid them out on the piano and said, okay guys, come sign these if you'd like. And they, were, um, they gave them to me at my mom's funeral. And um, I still have them and I love looking over those because um, especially when I miss her because it's like comforting to know that like I'm not the only one. And um, it was just like overwhelming like wow, these people really care for me. <laughs> like, um, It was actually funny because I walked in that day late and they were trying to hide the cards, but I was kind of like, something's up. Like, It was weird that they were doing that right when I walked in, but um, I just kind of figured something was up, but then when I saw the cards, I definitely broke down and I was like, this is, this is overwhelming. Like, this is, it was just amazing Like, what kindness they had to do that for me. And it might have been something little to me, but like, it still impacts me. Like, I love that about choir. And I know that um, friends from other schools can like relate. Like I think it's universal that music is just there for them in general. I love, I don't notice this, but I love including people in things. And I hate um, seeing people left out because I like to be included in things. And so um, just the fact that, um, I don't know, just the fact that they put like five minutes aside in their day to just like have this meaningful thing was like really, it, it was just amazing how intentional it was. And, how much love was behind it and everything and um, I don't know it just really like formed a foundation for like Savannah like know that you can like come and be in choir and like know that you're loved and so yeah it was like it was definitely like it felt like we're like all one family and we have I love them we have like these the cheesy posters like we are family and all those things in there but um, a lot of people just kind of giggle at them including myself but I think it's I think it's true. <laughs> she had, she was surrounded by what we call our choir family. And I know many of them um, did things I don't even know about, but I also know, you know, we as a department, you know, a lot of us went to the funeral. A lot of us, you know, we made cards for her, just tried to, you know, be there for her, ask how she was doing, um, just watching out for her. So I know people were really, um, more aware maybe than she even necessarily knew and we were trying to make sure that we were there if she needed anything and uh, but she was you know she is amazing she is the type of person that it didn't shut her down she's very much an extrovert and she reaches out to others and I know I was just amazed knowing what was happening but still watching her be concerned about somebody else, or reaching out to another student, or smiling, giving them a smile if she knew they were having a rough day. And I know she has a very supportive, loving family, um, and I, that helps. And it's just, I know she has support there and through her faith and then through school. And I think that has really, really helped. But it can't be easy. She never stopped including or inspiring others. Kids, if they haven't thought about it now, might later when they face loss and they 
think about how they watched her and what she went through, that will become a story in itself. And sometimes you don't always think about it till you have to go through something like that. And then all of a sudden it pops in your mind, wow, this person was amazing at how they handled it. And it will be a, a story and a testament for someone else to, on how positively she handled it and, and how you can take that and still reach out to people rather than shut down because I know it is so easy to shut down when, when you go through that loss. And that at, it's at that time that you need people, you know. So I see her just being incredible when she, no matter what she goes into, she, because she's a people person and she's gonna, she cares and she takes care of people and reaches out. Next year, Savannah embarks on a new journey, one she's been working toward for a long time. I'm kind of torn. I don't, I have three majors that I'm kind of looking at. I'm looking at third world missions, um, music and worship, and Spanish. And I'm pretty positive Spanish is gonna be in there, but there's combinations of, I could do Spanish and music and worship because there are a lot of like mega churches now that need Spanish speaking um, worship leaders for the services. And um, the obviously the third world missions in um, Spanish go together really well. I actually went on to a mission trip um, to Guatemala and I really loved it. And I think that's when I really fell in love with Spanish, was just being able to talk to people that I didn't think I'd be able to talk to. I'm kind of leaning towards Bethel right now because I know that they have great worship experiences and they have amazing just things to offer and amazing opportunities up in the cities. And it's still fairly close to home where if I have like a mental breakdown over a final, I can still come home and be consoled. <laughs> People tell you that senior year is a ride, and it definitely is. Um, I'm a, a lot more involved than I thought I'd be. I don't know, like I just kind of take it day by day, just kind of like, oh, I, if I could be involved in that, like sure, like I love, I love filling my schedule with little things, but I also need to remind myself when to rest. So <laughs> that's a harder thing for me too. I see Savannah just really being successful no matter what she decides to do because she is such a people person. She has such a caring manner, um, and it's hard not to respond to her smile because it's so warm, and you just, you just want to be, get to know that person. You just want to be part of that person's circle, and the fact that she includes people, she's kind to others, and, and it's a real honest um, feeling that she portrays. You know, some. Some students, they can smile at you, but you know they're not really feeling it or you're, they're doing it because it's expected. But you can truly see that this is her and it's sincere and she really does care.